was working through this test, uh, specifically the Mathematics Invitational B in 2012, and there were just a few problems that I thought were really awesome problems and totally worth going over. So I've decided to try making videos again. It's, it's been a while since I've done that. You'll have to excuse my voice. It's a bit scratchy at the moment. Allergy issues. Okay, so let's start with number 10 here. The volume of the trapezoidal prism shown is 2,160 cubic centimeters. Find x in centimeters. The drawing is not to scale. Alright, and we're given a lot of dimensions here. At the top of this, or you could say the smaller of the two bases of this trapezoid, which is the, the base of the trapezoidal prism, of course, are 12 and 24. And so we need the height. In order to find the volume, of course, we're going to take the area of the trapezoid and multiply it by this quantity x. Again, x does represent the height of this trapezoidal prism in this problem. So if we drop perpendicular lines from the vertices up here, this is 12 centimeters, so from here to here is 12 centimeters, and the remaining 24 minus 12 is equally distributed amongst these two. So 24 minus 12 is 12. You cut 12 in half, you do get 6. So each of these from here to here are 6 centimeters. That's the key to this problem, really, is because if you know your Pythagorean triples, now we have a 6, 8, 10 triangle. The hypotenuse here is 10, this is a right angle. And so we can immediately know the height of this trapezoid is 8. Okay, let's not forget area for trapezoids is one half the sum of the two bases, base one plus base two, times the height of the trapezoid. Now I'm not talking about this height over here in red. This is the height of the trapezoidal prism. And that deals directly with the volume. This is actually the height of the trapezoid itself. So that that kind of makes me want to erase this. I'll probably write that again, but in a different color when we deal with the volume. Right now we're dealing with the area, really the area in blue here. So, we know the two bases are 12 and 24. Let's substitute that in over here. 12 plus 24. And the height, because of this Pythagorean triple, is 8 equals 12, 24, 36. Half of 36 is 18. So this way 18 times 8, which does all evaluate 244. Uh, and that again is the area of these trapezoidal bases when we're talking about the prism. Now let me switch colors here to address the volume. If we multiply this area, the area I did in red here, by the height of the trapezoidal prism, this is the height Volume for prisms is always just the area of the base, which sometimes we write as a large capital B, uh, times the height of the prism. The height of the prism is x, so 144x equals our volume, which is 2160. So really, we just need to divide by 144. 2160 divided by 144 is 15. So the answer is D. Number 14 asks us to simplify uh, sine beta times tangent beta plus cosine beta. And then we're given all these different options uh, as far as a simpler way to write this trigonometric uh, expression here. And so there's really different ways to approach these problems. I always find it best to go back to an arbitrary right triangle and think about all of these trig functions in terms of x, which is the horizontal distance, y, the vertical distance, and then r, which is the hypotenuse between those. So from that, we can really define all of our trigonometric functions in terms of y, r, and x. And then combining all this makes it slightly easier. So the sine, if this were angle theta, the sine of theta is expressed as uh, again, it's opposite over hypotenuse. So in this case, y over r 
Okay, the tangent of theta is, of course, opposite over adjacent, or y over x. And then the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is x over r. So really, when we put all this stuff together, it really becomes more of a, uh, it actually turns into a rational expressions problem. We've got y over r times y over x plus x over r. If we multiply these first, we get y squared over rx. We want to add that to x over r. So if we're adding these two, we need a common denominator. Uh, let's multiply this right-hand fraction by x so that it matches this denominator on the left. That means we must multiply the numerator by x as well. To simplify that, we get y squared plus x squared over our x, the common denominator. And again, here I was just putting the two numerators together. And then if we remember the Pythagorean theorem, for any general triangle like this, we know that x squared plus y squared is the same as r squared. So here we can substitute in r squared for the top. Again, because of this identity, and this is over our x. So one of the r's will cancel. This cancels that. At the very end, we're left with r over x. And if we go back to this triangle, r over x, well, it's the reciprocal of cosine, which is x over r. And then we know the reciprocal of cosine is secant. So this is the secant of theta, and the answer is a. I wanted to work out this problem mainly because I don't feel like that many people are familiar with this capital pi notation and what it really means. So you know, if you're familiar with capital sigma as far as summation, what this is, a capital pi indicates a product, or a product of consecutive terms, all in this form. And again, this is going from the value n equals 1 all the way up to n equals 3. So this really isn't a whole lot of substitution to do. The first term, assuming that n is equal to 1, we substitute that into this expression right here and we'll get a value. So if the n is 1, this is 1 raised to the 1 minus 1 power, 1 raised to the 0 power, plus n being 1. That's our first term. Uh, if n equals 2 and n equals 3, again, we want to evaluate the expression in parentheses. And what we're going to do, the pi says that we have to multiply all these terms together. So n equals 2 says, 2 raised to the first power, in this case, plus 2. n equals 3 is 3 raised to the second power, plus 3. So these are actually very pretty small numbers. We just have to multiply three small numbers with each other. 1 to the 0 is, again, 1. Everything to the 0 is 1. Plus 1, that gives me 2. 2 to the first is 2, plus 2 is 4. 3 squared is 9, plus 3 gives us 12, and we just multiply that, and these two are 8, so this is really just 12 times 8, that's 96 D.